Why did you just put me back on for this furry fest? Why did you Welcome allow this? Welcome to the furry fest. Why did you allow this? Man. I mean, it's a feather fest too. <laughs> Come on. Now we're just getting into subgenres. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's still yiffing. I don't know. You, are you not into the talons? Into I'm, talon? I'm talons? Stop. That's that's I'm a big stop. no. Right, I'm gonna stop. Oh no. <laughs> 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 like a mixture between sandpaper and corn on the cob. Right. Anyways, Phoebe's in the lead. All right, Chad, give us some bids if you want me to mute our mics, because clearly we don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, Ray gets off, and this is what happens. I know, right? God. Y'all messed up. All right. So, Phoebe with Rage. Chill with a bit of a lead. But, like... This is Juice we're talking about. If Juice is allowed to put his opponent into the cutscene, he will do so. Mm -hmm. So, like, Vivi's going to want to probably camp things out a little, try to space with Nair and Bear as best as he can. But I feel like a more defensive Vivi would do much better in this matchup. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like I've seen these two play before with Vivi coming I, to lead. Uh, I... I'm not, I, I don't know, I don't recall, but I wouldn't be surprised. It's like, Juice doesn't show up super often. He'll come to the occasional Saga and then the occasional Weekly. Uh, he no, kind of does what he do. If anything, it's, it's definitely, like, in a setting different from Xeno. I can imagine it happening at, like, a DNA or a Forge, perhaps. Oh, that's possible. Because I know Vivi frequently goes there and the the, uh, the Helix Live is, like, a good central point for... A lot of the, uh, the PA in New York to meet. Yeah. Ooh, how's that? Back here, nearly killing? Not quite. Ooh, uh, I appreciate it. Vivi tried to do something schmixy over there, but was not allowed to until Force Palm comes through. Clutches out that game looked one. really weird. That looked survivable. Like, I don't even think I have to like slow mo this because he just kind of just kept going. Also, there was like a weird like I know there was the freeze, but the freeze looked like it lasted extra long. It's like, uh, yeah. Oh no, yeah, because it didn't give the traditional um, zoom in. So like, force palm is one of those moves where at higher percentages it actually has like a fixed percentage of giving dramatic finish. Uh huh. But it's a different type of dramatic finish. Yeah. So like, it'll like, it'll zoom in. You'll hear like a very specific. Yeah. And it's blue. But the dramatic finish that we get for every other character, and in most situations, is red. Yeah. That time it gave us the red dramatic finish, indicating that it was supposed to just kill. But I guess the timing was the same as the Force Palm dramatic finish? I don't know. Bit of, weird bit of a weird, Yeah, it's a weird quirk. We might see it disappear in a future update as like one of those stealth fixes, but... What I would it, love to see is when people star KO that the radar goes away. Mm. That upsets me so much. You know, you could set that off. No, I like the radar. I also like the radar. But I'm saying the radar should not stay on if they're star camping. Anyway, we're getting distracted. Sorry. No, we're in the middle of a cutscene. But, yeah. Yeah, Falco's just, like, doing his thing. So, <laughs> I've had this conversation with Kofi in the past where Falco uh, combos 
as, as most people are used to calling them cutscenes at this point, but Falco specifically is Kingdom Hearts cutscenes. They're really long, and the first time around, you can't skip it. You have to sit there for the entire duration. Second time, though, you're allowed to skip it. Oh! <laughs> he did the thing. He did the thing. Let's go, Juice. The people's bird. This is Losers. You know, I'm really sitting here thinking, like, Juice got knocked down into Losers, and yeah. Vivi still kicking. But this as a matchup, I just feel is very strange. It's not too out of the ordinary for us to see a spacey player performing well, uh, at least in New York. Vivi had quite the loser's bracket one, beating uh, Beast and Jackal. Very good wins. Yeah. Also, two players who I wouldn't have been too surprised to have seen in top eight themselves, but Vivi's trying to make his claim to fame. Yeah, I remember in winners, he got timed out by Pokemon Lamb. Twice. Yes. Very magical moment for me. Oh boy. But uh, he got a pretty good uh, string of wins for it, so hey. And Juice got sent to losers by Venia in quarters. So I think this might actually be his first match. No, it's his second match. He beat Zomba to make top eight. And now we're here. Ooh, the back air just picking off Vivi just like that. Vivi's been doing a good job of at least escaping the situations that aren't as true during the combos. And like he's do playing wise from playing on the outside. Like he's not going for nearly as many um, Aura Sphere charges, trying to fight forward with Nerent's there. But I feel like it might be like too little presence. I feel like if he should be fighting for center stage a bit more. Or at least put Juice in uncomfortable positions, because I feel like one of the strongest aspects of Lucario and Ultimate is his ability to make his opponent feel uncomfortable and misposition themselves. It's all just semantics, though. It could also be the fact that Juice is just slapping him. Sometimes it is that simple. But good DI keeps Vivi in a moment longer. That would have been a cute call out. Vivi's always been good with that though. <coughs> Angling his uh, extreme speeds and whatnot. I really thought Vivi'd stole that one, but nope. Falco back air coming in clutch. Also, now that I look at. Yeah, Juice had a whole stock lead on him. Alright. Juice playing this fine. Juice cleaning the glasses. Vivi taking off the, the flannel. The flannel is off, guys. That's. That's a power. Is that power a power up? Yeah, hell yeah. Because the I know the, the flannel is lore. Yeah. Now you can only see his flannel aura. It is con it is no longer contained. Oh, this is limiter. Yeah. Bringing ourselves to town and city for game. We know. Game two. Game two. And as a reminder to folks, this is all best of five at this point. Yep. So the winner of this is going to win the best of three in the set. And uh, so if we go to best of five, the person who wins the best of three has counter pick advantage, which is a really Im this is a really important game to win. You know, because like if you win the best of three, either two one or two zero, oh, you get counter pick advantage. And that's a really big big deal. Yeah. That was a, kind of a messy end to it, and I like how Juice tried to pick it back up, but to no avail. Said Vivi just going to give him an opportunity for a little bit more damage. Weird pickup, but all right. The, so the song and dance between Lucario and Falco is so interesting because their typical approach options are so large in the grand scheme of things. Like, you have Lucario going for Aura Sphere charges or his own Nair, and then Falco with Nair and forward air. Yeah. Like, they take up a lot of space on their own. Yeah, they're not, like, super straightforward, like, uh, like draw the line directly toward them. You have to do this weird, like, I'm going to go towards them, then up, and then come down somehow. Like, that's like Cario going down with, like, Aura Sphere and stuff. And then you have Falco's, like... 
maybe I'll roll and I'll up tilt. You know, it's like, it's not obvious. And so because of that, their positioning is all over the place. And they're making it work as far as the damage race is concerned. But I feel like by the nature of their tools, it's like it makes sense that Juice is keeping it a steady lead. Like, he took the previous game, he's taking he's taking game three at a good pace right now. It's just because Falco can fight from the ledge a little bit better, and he has like more linear aggro options, and I feel like that linearity is almost helping him here. But Vivi keeps his head above water. Gets his down air off. Doesn't get anything off the nair. That looked like a fine start, but a little bit of a flub. Ah. Ooh. Ah. <coughs> Solid enough call out. Lucario's not the kind of character you want to be jabbing. Like, I'm just realizing that now. Like, that's just like, you're not getting anything substantial off it, especially as Falco. And that's just free damage for him. And then an even stock count, that's just delicious aura. 40 eye on the back throw, but again, that's delicious damage until he gets down tilt to the ledge. The forward throw up for the offstage play kind of an interesting take as well, I feel. Seeing Vivi's decision making in this set is all sorts of strange. Because I feel like what you would want to do against Falco is also counterintuitive to what Lucario wants. Because those little hits are kind of difficult to take. You get. You like you try to take a necessity hit, but you end up taking so much damage off of it. And on top of that, like Juice does a great job of maintaining his stage control, or if he is forced into a position to give it up, he snatches it right back. That full spot is terrifying, but not as scary as back air. The set point goes in favor of Juice. Had enough already? All right, so G's gonna stick stick to his uh, previous bands of FD and Kalos, which makes a world of sense because yeah. you're, you're taking away like super wide stages. And even though TNC has that position where there's no plats, it's not nearly as useful as the fact that Kalos is so wide and the ceiling blast zone is so far away from the rest of the stage. And then FD, I feel like you're asking for a world of hurt if you're letting Lucario take you to FD. Because mm -hmm. then he, he himself gets really free landings. And like Lucario can also cover the ledge pretty well in his own right. All right. So Lucario's become green now, I've noticed. So game four. Uh, okay. Yeah, he opened uh, Juice with the same combo in the previous game, but it led to nearly nothing. At least this time he's racking up good damage. Yeah. Like, see what I mean? Like, he, he was able to get his jab off scot free, but even that was such little damage. Mm hmm. Oh, man. Uh, so, Juice beginning to close the gap here. Uh. All right. I think. That was a good trade for Vivi. He's like, hit me with your laser, I'll blast you. Okay. I feel like Vivi read the roll too, just mistimed his uh, projectile. What was Juice going for? Devin Falco's forward smash can't two frame, right? I don't think so. Okay, cool. I, I mean, if he's going for it, I'm gonna say it, it can. Because like Falco does bring his feathers down low. Yes, he does. But, like... Chat, let us know. I, I really want to believe that that's not the case, that Juice was looking for calling out a higher recovery. Maybe. But... Okay. Oh, no. I don't want to live in a world where you can see some stuff too from like that. I'll see Falco back air kill any day of the week, though. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. All right, Bird, not having to use his up B, yeah. Set him off stage once again, but 
Vivi's going for too hard of callouts once he does get control of the ledge. And yeah, Falco is kind of hard to nail him down once you do have him off stage. I feel like Vivi commits super hard to the reads he's getting, and it's just getting him nowhere besides giving up stage control. There we go, back air of his own, right? Brings Vivi right back into it with minimal damage. Yeah, and that's a really important kill to make because, like, you do not want to be a stock deficit versus a character who has, like, projectile game and combo game like Falco. Because, like, anytime you're caught reaching, he'll, like, capitalize really heavily. So, evening up these stocks is a really good up for him. And right now, this percentage is not really anything huge. But he definitely has to win the, uh, the next few neutral exchanges before it becomes something huge. Yeah, Falco can very quickly become yeah. problematic, especially on Stadium, but... I really he's finding his footing better as the matchup goes. I really like the fact that Juice is giving uh, Vivi a check every time he goes to charge Arthur. He's like, stop that. Stop that. So you put your hands in the cookie jar, I'm going to slap it out. And it's really smart on Juice. You can tell that he's Ooh. like, he's experienced in this matchup. He doesn't want to have to deal with Vivi any longer than he needs to. Falco was able to move so quickly to get that kill uh, on the ledge there because he saw that, like, Vivi did normal getup because he saw that he had already, like, reached to, to kill him off stage. But Falco's so quick, uh, able to go for that attempt and then still kill him. Pick up from the Nair, just leads to a little bit of damage. Kind of free up there. Crossing with the Nair is so filthy with Falco, too. Mm. Actually, now that I mentioned it, like, Juice has had a couple of instances throughout the set where he manages to cross up Vivi, and he doesn't do anything with it, but, like, it's the idea that he's positioning himself really well, and... Alright. Yo, do me a favor. So, set count 3-1. Falco flip. Oof. Ha. Look at all that bird. It's a lot of bird. Oh, a lot of bird. Can we roll it back so we can see the DI on that? Uh, for the last kill? Yeah, I need to see, because sure that was like a determined, I got seventh DI. <laughs> <I got. laughs> was it here? And, well, bam, all right. Lucario glows too much blue for us to see. All right, that's straight out. That is immediately like, yeah, give me my out. seventh yeah, we payout. Can see it. Okay. Good God. <laughs> no wonder he died so he, Like, wow. All right. All right. So, uh, Vivi going to be taking seventh place at this, you know, pretty stacked uh, Xenosaga. So, good job to him. And uh, Juice is going to be moving on. I so, feel like yeah. with Vivi's play, 